Professor Diaz here, and in this video I'm going to talk about prices of related goods and how that is a determinant of demand. Prices of related goods. This is probably the, the most tricky of the determinants of demand to wrap your head around, um, although it's not that tricky, so I, I don't want anybody to be intimidated. Here's the concept, right? Sometimes as the prices, well, we all, we all know, already know with the law of demand, as the price of a good goes up, we buy less of it, right? As the price of a good goes down, we buy more of it. But it's actually the case that as prices of other goods, not the good we're looking at, goes up, it can affect how much we demand um, another good, okay? So let's say that this demand curve right here is the demand curve for chips, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and write, um, let's use a new color here. I'm gonna write chips so we can keep that in our mind up top. So this is the market right here for chips. Now, most people would say chips and pretzels are a related good, okay? And most people would say those two goods are um, substitutes. And by substitute, I mean this. In fact, I'm gonna jot substitutes down. Most people would say chips and pretzels are substitutes. Substitutes. Uh, what I mean by substitutes is this. Um, if you're gonna go to a party and you're gonna bring a snack, you're either gonna bring chips or you're gonna bring pretzels, but not both, right? Um, they, they, you buy one or the other. Another example of substitutes might be um, chicken and beef. Um, you're gonna have some protein, some meat with dinner. You'll usually either cook beef or chicken, but not both, right? The other type of good, when we're talking about related goods, are complements. Complements are goods that you typically have together, right? The most classic of examples is hot dogs and hot dog buns, right? If you're gonna bring, if you're gonna eat hot dogs, you always eat hot dog buns, right? Another example might be motorhomes and uh, gasoline, right? If you're gonna buy a motorhome, you're gonna spend a lot of money on gas or diesel, right? Um, fuel. And so those would be examples of complements. Now, in both of these cases, these are what we'd consider related goods, but sometimes related goods are substitutes and sometimes related goods are complements. So let's go back to the substitutes example first, okay? And say that this is a demand curve for chips. And we're gonna talk about the substitute good of pretzels. If the price of pretzels goes up, then what's gonna to happen to the demand for chips? Just think about it for a minute. Pause the video and think about it. If the price of pretzels goes up, what's gonna to happen to the demand for chips? Well, it's gonna increase the demand for chips because as the price of pretzels goes up, people are gonna buy less pretzels and they're gonna to need to buy something. You're not gonna to go to a party empty handed, so you're gonna buy chips instead. So as the price of pretzels increase, the, the demand for chips goes up. Conversely, what happens to the demand for chips if the price of pretzels goes down, right? If the price of pretzels goes down, then the demand for chips is gonna go down, right? Because as the price of pretzels goes down, people are gonna buy more pretzels, therefore they're not gonna need to buy as many chips to take to the party. I will just take a minute here to say, um, always bring chips to a party because pretzels are not that good. So if you wanna be liked by your friends, make sure you bring chips to the party and not pretzels. Uh, let's talk about the hot dogs and hot dog bun example. So instead, let's look, talk about compliments, right? So now let's say this is hot dogs. Okay, and hot dogs have a compliment, hot dog buns. You hardly ever eat a hot dog without eating hot dog buns. So what's gonna happen to the demand for hot dogs as the price of hot dog buns goes up? Okay, think about it. Pause the video and think about it. Okay, as the price of hot dog buns goes up, remember we're talking about a complement good here, then the demand for hot dogs is gonna go down. Right, because if you go to the store and you're like, oh, I'm gonna buy some hot dogs, but then you look and you see the price of hot dog buns is increased, you're gonna buy less hot dog buns, which in turn means you're gonna buy less hot dogs, okay? Conversely, 
if the price of hot dog buns goes down, what's going to happen to the demand for hot dogs? It's going to go up. You're going to buy more hot dogs. Again, you walk into the grocery store. You see um, hot dogs. Uh, you, you see, uh, you see, excuse me, you see hot dog buns are on sale. You're like, oh, I should buy some hot dog buns. But then you don't walk out of the store if there's hot dog buns. You also buy hot dogs, therefore increasing the demand. Okay, so there's, there's, um, these are the two ways that uh, goods and services are, or demand can shift based on the prices of related goods, right? Related good prices can actually change the demand for a good. And you have to remember this can happen in two ways. Either the goods are related by a substitute or complements, and they have the opposite effect. So you need to make sure you have those two straight in your mind. In the next video, we'll talk about uh, how number of buyers is a determinant of demand.